I think any teacher finds reward when they see their children succeed, but because of the nature of my children, who are so young, I have seen first steps, I have seen first words, I've seen that light bulb go off when they discover something for the very first time. And that's what keeps me going and that's what brings me back year after year. When I was in college at Eastern, we I was a part of a pilot program called SPLED. So we took enough coursework to be licensed in special ed as well as elementary ed. I initially was an elementary ed major and after graduating I realized I wasn't ready to teach special ed. So in case I got put in the position to teach a special ed class, I decided to go back for my master's in special ed. And during all the research and classes and everything I did, I realized I wanted to do special ed and I kind of wanted to help out whoever I got to help out when I did start working. I think that's where I could make the most impact with kids. Um, and it was an opportunity to work with kids who um, really needed that extra help. And I just found that more rewarding than some of the other areas I could work in. Um, this is actually my, only my third year teaching here in this grade level. I've taught all ages now from preschool to age 22 for children with disabilities. Um, I wasn't happy with working with the older kids too much, so I wanted to do something in the younger ones, even though they have a lot of problems. They also, um, they're a lot more verbal than some of my children I worked with at the high school and older, older level, which was different. I was actually planning on being a stay-at-home wife in high school because I was engaged and then I started subbing because I needed to get out of the house and I fell in love with being around the kids and getting to enjoy little people because I was, was old enough to go above elementary school so I did K through 5. And so I was like, oh, I think I'd rather have my own class rather than go into somebody else's class and do their thing. I'd rather do my own thing. A lot of my kids come in with uh, very limited skills. They can't talk, they can't do many things. This is their first experience in, with structure, with rules, with expectations. And so just instilling that in them can be very challenging. I can see a lot of the behaviors, but you know, I think through the consistency I show, through the structure I give them, most of the behaviors are gone pretty quick and then we can get to work on uh, the learning part. There's always going to be job openings in special ed and it's easier and harder at the same time. Um, there's good parts about it and there's bad parts about it. The good parts is um, it's a smaller caseload. The bad parts is that you deal with a lot of behaviors, a lot of paperwork, lack of support from administration, lack of people understanding what we're trying to do with the students. Lack of support from administration all the way from on-site up through the district, um, lack of parent support. You have to have a lot of patience and some days I'm human and I don't have that patience and some days I do. Um, that would be the biggest challenges I would say. Uh, I was a lawyer. I worked a lot with kids uh, trying to keep them in school, kids who had gotten in trouble, really liked the job, uh, didn't get to follow through a lot, had a great respect for teachers. So when I decided to uh, move to New Mexico, I wanted a new career, I decided to become a teacher, and particularly a special ed teacher. I love watching them grow. Um, and like I said, being maternal, I love being maternal. So working with kids this little, when they love you and they know that they're safe with you, it's a good feeling to know that you can provide these kids with that kind of feeling. When you see a child learn and grasp a concept that you've been working on sometimes for months, if not years, and then they finally are able to do it independently. Something as simple as putting on their coat or, you know, completing a full sentence or advocating for themselves without hitting, without physically retaliating, but being verbally responsible that way. It's kind of, oh, it's, a, you know, they trust me when it's hard for students with special needs to trust because they're usually the first victim of anything because they can't talk or they can't advocate or they can't defend themselves and to know they feel safe with you is a is awesome <laughs> feeling so <laughs>